Welcome back. Now, it is still a normal news day as well, right? So some news having come out earlier today, the rise in the price of goods and services slowing again in September. According to stats, they say inflation dropped to 3% last month compared to the same month last year. Now, while the supply of goods and services has begun to pick up amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, demand has also fallen nonetheless as consumer pockets continue to take strain. Now, consumer price inflation has remained below the midpoint of the Reserve Bank's target range of between 3 and 6%, especially since February. This is the second consecutive drop in inflation this year, having peaked at 4.6% in seven month, uh, rather seven months ago. Alcoholic beverages and tobacco costs were 4.1% higher compared to a year ago, as government opened up the sale of these products. Core inflation, which excludes uh, food and energy sector prices, uh, increases came in at 3.3%. Food price inflation came in at 3.9% last month, as consumers had greater demand for fruit and meat. Now, the news does come uh, or offers more room for the Reserve Bank to cut interest rates again this year. The bank's monetary policy committee will make an announcement on the lending rate. That's set to happen next month. All right, then. Well, markets have certainly been quite interested. We've seen a more than 1% fall, in fact, in the local currency, actually, as we head towards this medium-term budget policy statement. A little bit of hurt coming through then as we try to get some sense of positivity. We had hoped, of course, that things would perhaps look a little bit better off when it comes to this market picture. Unfortunately, that's not to be the case. Even the international markets that started things off in the red, considering that perhaps we're not going to get that U.S. stimulus package we had hoped for before Election Day. That's said to happen on November the 3rd. So the big question mark now is what happens from here? Where does the market get its joy on the local front? Very difficult to say, considering that the growth picture might certainly change a little bit later today. The expectation for where we might sit by the close of 2020 could even be worse than where we sat uh, back in June or July. So where to from here? Let's chat to Michael Traherne then from uh, Vestact Asset Management as we hopefully get a slight picture as to what we can expect, but also just how bad things might actually be. Is there uh, a way to assess that really in full, Michael? Is there a way to say, yep, this is how bad things really are when it seems like every measuring stick points to negativity? Yeah, I would be And if I think if you knew the answer to that, uh, you could make a lot of money going forward. Uh, the reality is there's just too many unknowns. Um, and you have a look at European markets today, they're getting smashed. Uh, they're, they're at the uh, levels last seen in May. So we're giving up a lot of the gains that we've made in the second half of the year. Um, and that seems to be COVID linked. It seems to be US election linked. It seems to be similar package, as you were saying. Uh, so there's a lot of unknowns around at the moment. Um, and unfortunately, when you've got unknowns, uh, the risky assets do badly as well, and that's what we've seen with the RAND. Uh, this morning it went from 1610 uh, to the mid 1630s now. Uh, so it's done quite a big reversal and given up gains over the last two weeks. So it's uh, very much a risk off day, and uh, that's the environment that our finance minister is uh, going to be presenting uh, the speech this afternoon in. Yes. It, gets, it gets so difficult to kind of assess what investors would want from a medium term budget policy statement like ours. But is there perhaps a general sense of we definitely need to do things like reduce debt, create a, a less reliance from the SOEs on, on government's fiscus as well? Do you get a sense that that perhaps would help the market at the very least? So the, the first thing the market's going to be looking at is what is our debt to GDP ratio? What is the forecast going forward? How bad have our tax revenues been? Um, and how much borrowing does the government plan to do over the next year? And where are we going to tap that money? Uh, so far, South Africa has been fairly resilient. Um, and one of the biggest reasons for that is we've got quite a deep uh, debt market in South Africa, which has meant that the government can raise in revenue. And then it's a very, very good thing because it means that a weaker rand doesn't increase your debt. Uh, but it looks like we're reaching a point now where the government might have to start borrowing more money overseas. Uh, that's risky. So the market will be looking at, uh, the market already expects the budget to be, to be ugly. Um, it all depends on how ugly will it be and how, much, how many bailouts for SOEs and are we turning a corner. I and mean, I think those are the main things we're looking for. Mm. It looks like we, we could be heading towards more spending than cutting when it comes to uh, our, our framework. For so many years, we've touted this whole thing of, of, of trying to reduce expenditure. 
Is this the right way to go about things, though, to continue to spend? It's a very uh, debated topic. Uh, the thing is, if government cuts its spending, that has direct short-term impact on, on the, the, the economy. Uh, obviously, if one of your biggest constituents cuts back spending, uh, that has a very direct impact on what our GDP growth does in the short term. Uh, so the argument needs to be government shouldn't spend less, but should spend the money in areas that are uh, growth producing. So infrastructure spend, uh, like our finance minister has been saying, uh, some of the big infrastructure projects, that's what you want to see. If you're paying uh, salaries, you want to be in departments or entities that are adding value to the economy. Uh, you, you, know, you don't want a case where you're spending money uh, in areas where you don't actually see any growth coming from it. So that's the difficult thing, is moving it from wasteful expenditure to uh, value-enhancing expenditure. Mm. So difficult, though, in a time when I suppose investors uh, have, have tried to face up to every single uh, um, tragedy, if you want to call it that, that has happened this year. I mean, COVID-19 is still not over. There's still expectations of weak growth across many continents uh, and many countries as well. Uh, are we at a point, perhaps, where the market is just pricing in negativity across the board? So South Africa was limping coming into COVID-19. I and mean, remember, we were already in a recession before this happened. Um, so compared to many of our counterparts, you know, we, we are a lot weaker than they were. Uh, and we also we don't have the spending power that uh, the Northern Hemisphere countries have. Uh, so we, we've got struggles. If you have a look at the JSC, uh, all shares done basically nothing for five years. Um, and that's very much indicative of zero GDP growth. And uh, the implication is that if you've got a pension fund in South Africa, you haven't seen growth for five years. Um, so lack of GDP growth uh, directly impacts the whole nation. Um, and you know, a big part of that includes government employees, because remember, the PRC is the biggest investor on the JSC. So we, we're all connected. Uh, we need a government that's efficient. Uh, we need a uh, government that spends its money wisely. And the reality is uh, it hasn't been like that so far. And to turn a ship of that size doesn't happen quickly. Um, and I think the market's pricing in a uh, reality of the next five years is very, very muted growth, with uh, hopefully these years being the time that we lay the foundation for uh, massive growth at the end of the decade. But I think it's going to be slow. Yep, it certainly does feel like it's going to be slow. Michael Traherne, appreciate the time, though, this Wednesday afternoon. We just have 20 minutes to go or so until uh, Finance Minister Tito Boweni does deliver that medium-term budget.